Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting New Year's Gnome and I'm sipping on some strawberry tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are Mars Black, Burnt Umber, which I like to call brown, Titanium White, Deep Yellow, and Fire Red. And of course, you can switch up those colors if you like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'm going to be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes for my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number eight round synthetic brush. And I have a number two round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video in the video description, I will be providing you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of the canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're going to do for the first step is we're going to be painting the background of the canvas. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The color I'm using is just black. So I'm creating a nice dark base for my whole scenery. So this way, all of my other objects will really pop off and it'll look like a nice nighttime celebration, which I think is what we associate New Year's with because it's always at, the, at midnight. <laughs> so it's always a nice nighttime atmosphere when that event happens. So I'm starting with a nice black background. I'm not doing any special brush stroke. I like to, when I'm painting, especially a, a solid canvas or a black canvas, I like to kind of just start around my edges. So I make sure I get all of those hit. And then I just use nice long broad strokes throughout the rest of the um, canvas in order to get it fully painted in. Black covers really well. So you most likely will not have to do a second coat in order to get this fully covered. But once it dries, if you see little bits of streaking here and there that you're not um, fond of, you could certainly do a second coat. But we are going to be putting a layer of what I'm going to call my atmospheric dimension in the background. So that will take care of most likely any imperfections in your background if you do have them. And then um, once I get this entire canvas covered, what I like to do is I will take my brush, let me just get this last little section here, and I like to go just back and forth with a light touch. And what this will do is this will level out all of the paint so it all becomes nice and level to the surface of the canvas. And it'll help me hit any spots that I might have missed during that first kind of uh, pass with the application. And then we're gonna be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint some atmospheric dimension. I'm gonna be using my um, large bristle brush. The colors I'm gonna use are red, yellow, brown, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a kind of a 
orangey type of a color that I'm going to use as, it's going to turn out more yellowy on top of the black, but I'm going to use it to create just almost like a glow behind my gnome. So that way when I go to put on my black details such as the hat and the, um, the clothing and the, the arms and stuff like that, the gnome will pop out in front of that background. So it provides a couple of different, a couple of different um, purposes. So I have pre-mixed myself my color that I'm going for. This is it right in through here. How I got to this was mostly yellow and then I used a touch of brown and just a touch of red. And what it created is just this almost like a, I need a little bit more red than that, a little a, kind of like a rusty orange type of a color. And when I put this on top of the black, it's going to uh, turn it a little bit more on the yellowy side. I'll, I don't know if I said I was going to use white, but I'll probably use a little bit of white as well. So this is the color I'm going for in through here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that color and you can see the difference between it on the canvas versus what it looks like on the palette. So it'll turn a little bit different on top of that black, just so you have an understanding of what just happened there. <laughs> and so what I'm doing is I'm taking this color and I'm rubbing it around. I'm, I'm giving it kind of this soft atmospheric glow to it. I'm going to use it in a lot of the area around uh, this background, knowing that my gnome is so large on my canvas, I want to kind of get this spread out pretty darn far. Using one of these bristle brushes helps me out to kind of thin out the paint as it's going away from that center. So this gives me good opportunity to get almost like a smoky type of a look or a, uh, a nice gradient of sorts going from that brighter area in the middle towards a darker area on the exterior. When I just kind of keep working this, I'm going to have it again pretty far out. So I'm just leaving a little bit of the black border untouched. I might even come in um, on some of my black border if I feel that I have any unpainted areas and I might touch those areas up with a little bit of black if I needed to. I also, in a minute, will probably use a little bit of white paint to amp up some of this brightness of this color that I'm using right now, but um, I'll make that determination in a minute, knowing again that my gnome is going to take up a real large area here, so I uh, I just know that I can, I can be pretty liberal in the amount of this color that I'm putting in, and I can also... Um, you know, make it as light as I want to. So I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of white paint, just itty bitty 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 bit. <laughs> I'm going to put it uh, closer to where the gnome is going to be, so maybe more in the center type of area. And again, just an itty bitty bit in order to get this maybe interior glow a little bit brighter. And then I'm just going to kind of work it out in through here. And again, the center part is not entirely important for it to be perfect because the gnome is going to cover it. This is just going to be the edges around the gnome that are going to be visible by the time you're done. And then I just kind of keep working this. I just picked up more of that custom color and as I'm kind of feeling like I'm almost done with it, what I like to do is just kind of let off on my pressure a little bit and what this is doing is it's helping me to continue to work the paint that is still wet and it allows me to get it a little bit softer looking so initially you heard my brush kind of really scrubbing 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 but as I'm kind of feeling like I'm coming to a final resting place, you're hardly going to hear my brush because what I'm doing is I've let off on the pressure and I'm just softly mo moving around that remaining wet paint in order to maybe eliminate brush stroke marks, get it to be a little bit softer. You can use blending brushes to do this. Blending brushes are going to have a softer tip than my bristle brush does, but for me, I just let off on that pressure and it provides the same uh, the same service. And then we're going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this background atmospheric dimension on, you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. 
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint a couple of fireworks. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are red, yellow, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have one kind of uh, behind my gnome's head kind of up in the distance. So I'm gonna have one kind of dead center somewhere in this vicinity, and then I'm just gonna have one up in the top left-hand corner. You could really be as festive as you want and have more fireworks than I have. I'm also gonna be later doing one sparkler that my gnome is holding. So I'm gonna reserve this area in through here for the sparkler that he's gonna be holding. <laughs> so I'm gonna start um, with this brush. I'm gonna start with yellow paint. So when I'm doing my fireworks, I kind of like to put a glow behind them. So I'm gonna be using yellow as my glow, which will end up a little bit, again, more green looking than this because it's on the black, but I'm, I'm cool with that. I wanna just have some sort of glow behind them. So I'm starting up here and then I'm just kind of bringing this out in a, I'm wiping my brush off. I don't wanna have a lot of paint on my brush. This is my burst of my, Firework is going to be up in this corner. So I'm just kind of bringing down this hue of the yellow that's going to be what I'll refer to as kind of the glow to the firework. So something like this is going to start me out. I'm going to do the same thing for my other firework. So again, just yellow paint on my brush. I'm going to have the center of my um, firework about three and a half inches from the top of my canvas and in about the center of my canvas. So somewhere right in through here. And this one I'm gonna have uh, represented as a bigger one than the other one, than the one up in the left-hand corner. So this one I'm gonna just be pulling this yellow out pretty darn far. And again, this is just kind of the glow to the, um, to the firework itself. And again, my gnome's head is gonna be covering a lot of this. So this is just kind of getting me started, allowing me to know kind of where I want the footprint of that firework to go. So that's looking pretty good to me. Now I'm gonna go put some sparkly stuff on this one up in through here. So I, I want to have a lot of brightness to this, so I'm gonna pick up a little bit of yellow and white to start on my brush, so yellow and white. I'm gonna be dotting a little explosive spot in the center of my firework, and then I'm gonna use the corner of my brush to start pulling out these sparks of sorts from the firework. So for me, I like to really have explosive fireworks and allow for maybe some pieces to kind of break off and look like they're, you know, it, kind of firework, I don't know a word, like falling towards the ground, have lots of sparkle in them and stuff. So I've got my yellow and my white and that's gonna start me out. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other one. I'm just building them in a progressive way so I can have, um, some nice dimension to them. So I put my little explosion in the middle like this, and then I'll start pulling out the explosive kind of um, display of sparks and stuff that come out of it. So I like to kind of just make sure that they're coming from the center and just pulling out these little pieces coming, shooting out. Mine are gonna go, you know, on this one are gonna go all the way up to the top of my canvas. You could certainly have yours in a different way than, than I have mine. I like to have gravity taking over every now and again, so I'll have the ones kind of cur curving downwards as if they're falling to the ground or they have little curves coming out this way. So just be really your own, you know, firework maker <laughs> when you're making these. It doesn't have to be exactly as mine. Um, I do wanna add a little bit of red to this too, but I don't want it to go too kind of, um, fire looking like um, a vibrant red. So I'm gonna use red and yellow at the same time on my brush. I did not wash my brush. And this is going to add some nice, pretty red to my, um, to my firework. I'm gonna add a little bit more brightness with the uh, white in a minute, but I'm just adding a little bit of red in through here with the yellow on my brush at the same time. So it's gonna provide a nice, um, kind of unifying to unified tone to it and it'll make the yellow and the red look like they belong together as opposed to them just being two separate colors. And then once I've got 
my red as much as I want it. I will, I think I want a little red in the center of this one as well. You can have your fireworks any color. You can have blue fireworks, you could have green fireworks, you can have whatever color is speaking to you. That's gonna be a judgment call on your part as to however bright you want them to be. I just know I'm not gonna have any red represented in my gnome, so the red is going to really stand out on its own outside of the um outside of the gnome who's going to be you know the star of the show but <laughs> this red will help for these fireworks to kind of have their own identity as well now i'm going to wash and dry my brush i'm going to do one more layer with uh mostly white but i might use a little bit of wet, uh, yellow as well so i'm going to wash and dry my brush I'm gonna put a tiny bit of white paint on my brush. And I think one of the biggest things with these fireworks is just to not overdo it. So when I when I say a tiny bit, I really mean a tiny bit. It's just on the tip of my brush. When I um, am doing this, I'm not over painting. I'm really just kind of um, allowing for those little sparkly marks to happen or you know the little tiny um, shoots of the brightness coming out of the firework. I'm, I'm just using the tip of my brush. So you can really, again, make it as bright as you want or as subtle as you want, but I am just kind of allowing for these to have a lot of energy in them without them taking up too much, again, of the visual show of my, my painting. I, want, I just want them to be a background kind of accent, but if you wanted yours to be, you know, more lively you could do that too i just picked up yellow and white on my brush so these sparks don't go too white on me again i don't want them to be too too overpowering so i picked up yellow and white at the same time to kind of finish out these bright marks and if you felt that this brush was too big for you you could certainly just pick up and use your smaller brush to make this happen um, or your medium brush whatever brush works for you sometimes i like to just use uh, one tool for many different jobs so if that doesn't work for you when you're getting towards these smaller details feel free to just switch brushes and again make it as bold and beautiful as you want and then once you've got this done we're going to be using our piece of chalk for the next step so you can put the brush away take out your piece of chalk and get ready for the next step all right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our gnome. I'm gonna be using my white chalk. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that is comfortable for you. I do again recommend that you make sure that your canvas is dry because it's always easier to draw on a dry canvas than it is to draw on a wet canvas. <laughs> so I'm gonna guide you through a series of markers. We're gonna be connecting those markers. We're gonna be making some nice basic shapes. And by the time we're done, we'll have some nice easy sections that we'll be able to color in during the painting process. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first start you with the gnome nose, which will be an oval type of a shape. So if you find yourself the center of your canvas, top to bottom, left to right, for me, that's about right here. What I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna to go to, to the right of that about a quarter of an inch to a half of an inch, make myself my first marker. Then I'm gonna to go to the left of that, I'd say almost about three inches, make myself another marker. I'm gonna find myself about the center of these two and then go up about an inch and down about an inch. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna give me four points that I can connect to make an oval type of a shape. So I'm gonna take this and just connect all four of my markers so I can have a nice oval type of a shape to start my drawing process. So now I can build every shape off of this to create my, my cute little gnome. So I'm going to be creating the hat first. I'm gonna come up from the center of the nose. I would say about half to three quarters of an inch, give myself a marker. And then I'm gonna go from the top of the nose, I'm gonna to go to the right. I would say almost halfway between here and the edge of my canvas, make myself another marker. And then on the left hand side, I'm gonna go uh, again about halfway between here and the edge of my canvas, so maybe about here. So I've got my gnome a little off centered to the, he's a little bit to the left. Um, and the left side of his hat is gonna be a little bit more narrow than the right side. So you can, yours doesn't have to be exactly where mine is. This is just something that I thought was gonna be cute. So now I'm gonna connect the top of the nose to here 
to here and to here. So we're gonna just make a rim to our hat. So I'm gonna start from here. I'm gonna bring this down. I'm gonna bring it back up. I'm gonna bring it and hit it in through here. Gonna do the same thing over on this side, just kind of drop it down. Gonna bring it back up, kind of hit my marker, bring it back down and up like this. So it's just a fun rim to the hat. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come inside these two little corners a little bit. This is gonna uh, start the top, the top of my hat. I'm going to come all the way up to the top center of my canvas. I'm gonna go to the left of that about an inch, inch and a half, and then down about an inch, inch and a half, make myself a little bit of a marker. I'm gonna connect, gonna connect here to here. This is the right outside edge of the hat with kind of like a wavy type of a line. So like this, bring it like this, and then somewhere up in through here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, come down from here, maybe about two, uh, maybe about three inches and over to the left about an inch, right in through here. I'm gonna connect this dot to here. So this is gonna be the left inside part of the hat. So this in essence kind of provides you with the width of the head and some you know fun structure to it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down from here, maybe about an inch and a half to two inches and over to the left about an inch and a half to two inches, make myself a little circle like this. And then I'm gonna connect here to the top of my circle like that. And then here to the top of my circle with a little bit of a wavy line like that. So now we've got a cute gnome hat. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my, um, my section for my beard or my hair, which is gonna come down pretty darn far. So I'm gonna come inside these two a little bit, maybe right in through here and it right in through here. I'm gonna create wavy type of a line to create um, the structure of the outside of the beard. I'm gonna have my beard coming. I would say it's gonna kind of taper down in through here. So I would say my, my lowest part is only gonna be maybe about two inches away from the bottom of my canvas. And it might be a little to the right of the center of my nose, so somewhere in through there. So I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna just kind of bring this down in a nice kind of wavy type of a way, something like that. And then I'm gonna just kind of give myself this real fun, uneven type of a bottom to it. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna take from here, give myself some nice wave coming down in through here. And then maybe right about here, I can start to, you know, just kind of break it off, give myself a little bit of a edge to the beard. I'm gonna do the bottom portion of the body. I want my gnome to almost look like he's kind of in a dancing position. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it from this corner in through here and I'm just gonna bring it out like this, like this is his hip, bring it out like that. And then from over here, I'm gonna bring this kind of in a similar angle. So I'm gonna bring it in just a little bit and then this will be the other part of the leg, so or the bottom part, so something like that. I need to put two arms on. One of them's gonna be holding a sparkler, and the other one's gonna be holding a clock. So about halfway down this beard on this side, I'm gonna do two diagonal lines like this, and then an oval circle type of a shape like this. And then on the other side, I'm gonna do it in an upward direction. So I'm gonna take this and give myself two diagonal lines and a circular oval type of a shape like that. And that's all we're gonna be doing for the outline. We're gonna be using our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your chalk away, make any little adjustments that you want, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the base coat for our gnome. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black, white, brown, yellow, and red. So I'm using all of my colors for this step. I'm gonna start by just coloring in my black sections. So for me, that's gonna be this bottom section of the clothing. So in an area like this where I've got black right next to black, I'm gonna leave a little bit of the evidence of my chalk mark so I don't lose that spot. This whole bottom for me is already black. So I'm just using um, my black to make sure that where it meets the beard is all black. So I can just kind of pull up these little black squiggly 
lines going into that beard, making sure that I've got that whole part covered. I can make sure that I've got this part where I had some of that background shown. I think actually I want to pull this little hip area up in through here. Yeah, there we go. And then um, the beard will overlap that a little bit. I'm also going to be doing the um, sleeves of the gnome. So I'm putting black clothing on my my little gnome in through here. So again, where black meets black, if you have um, any difficulty, uh, if you still have a lot of black behind here, you'll just want to leave a little bit of the evidence of your chalk mark. That way, during the painting process, you won't get confused when we go to paint the other other colors. But if you if you got a lighter background behind there and the black is showing up really nice and well, you can certainly just uh, get rid of your your chalk mark. I'm going to color in this whole hat area, and I apologize if you cover up your favorite part of your <laughs> of your firework because it's inevitably going to happen, especially if you put the the burst right in the middle <laughs> of the hat. So sorry if that's happened to you, um, but you can always make another firework too if you wanted to. <laughs> but I'm going to color in this whole thing. I like kind of building from the back forward. It just for me makes it a little bit easier. So if I was to be trying to work that firework around this hat, I might not have gotten it to look so um, uh, cohesive from one side of the hat to the other, or you know, to make it look as natural as I could, blending it behind that um, hat. This way it really ensured that it was gonna look like it's behind the hat and not just accidentally set you know, to the side of the hat. So that's just one of those things that makes my painting process a little bit easier. Some painters like to draw everything out and work, you know, one object alone in a, you know, in a more systematic kind of way. But for me, again, working from the back forward provides me with a nice easy process to to not lose my way and to not have to redo certain areas. And once I've got this black done, I am going to be switching colors for my next section, just making sure I've got this nice and kind of level and that I don't have too many heavy spots. All right, so I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna be creating a custom tan, tannish gray for the beard and the, um, the hands. So I'm washing and drying my brush. I have already pre-mixed my color so you can see where I'm headed. Actually, I'm going to show you how I make all of these three custom colors before we fill, fill in the areas. So this is my custom tan. How I got to this was a lot of brown, a touch of black, and white. A, a good amount of white. So what I'm making is just almost like a light grayish tan color and I'll be utilizing that as the base coat for my beard and my gloves. Then I also have a custom gold color that I'll be using for my um, clock as well as the rim of my hat and this little bell or little ball on the end of the hat. So how I got to that was brown yellow, a good amount of yellow, more yellow than that, <laughs> and a touch of white. So this will make a nice believable, almost like metallic gold type of a color, which I think is very much associated with the celebration of New Year's, which is the time in which I'm depicting my gnome to be celebrating. And then this is going to be the skin color for the nose. So how I got to this is about equal parts of red yellow, brown, and white. And then I just mix it together. I need more white than that. And I get what's like a nice soft peachy skin type of a color. Again, yours doesn't have to be exactly as mine. This is just what I'm headed for. So once you've got your custom colors, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna do my beard and my uh, hands first. So I wash and dry my brush. I'm picking up my custom tan grayish type of a color and I'm going to go just right around my nose like this. In these upper areas or the area that it meets the hat and the nose, I'm not really terribly concerned about a perfect brush stroke at this point. I'm really just looking to make sure that it meets those areas. 
And then as I come down, I am going to be using a directional brush stroke, which means I'm gonna be using it more kind of up and down. You could even wave it a little bit at this point, but we will be doing another layer, um, making all the little highlights and shadows and stuff on the, on the beard and the mustache so it looks more realistic. So you don't have to worry about making it look realistic at this point, but you, or having it with lots of motion, but the uh, primary kind of goal here is just to get all the way up to your chalk marks. So you make sure that it's almost overlapping those arms. When you come down to the beard where it's overlapping the clothes, what I like to do is just kind of uh, almost pull the tip of my brush in these curved type of uh, strokes so it'll make it look like it's got a little bit of um, singular pieces and I'm running into a little bit of wet black which is totally works for me because it'll just give it a little bit more um, substance and then as I am reaching the edges like if I want a couple pieces to hang out over here you can just pull a couple little singular pieces down in through there I'm also gonna pull out a couple of cute pieces for the beard at this point. So that way I've got the, the structure kind of started where I want that beard to, um, to protrude out the sides. So I'm just using the same color and in through this area over here, I'm just gonna pull out a couple of fun little pieces in through here. You don't have to pull out a lot, just a few. That's going to help to sell the story and it's going to help you to build it in a nice natural way. And then I'll do the same thing over here. Just a little bit above those, uh, above those arms will work. And then I'm going to use this same color for the hands. So just paint in this simple shape. Again, we'll put all of our details on later, making for these hands to be able to hold objects. <laughs> and again, if yours don't come out perfectly symmetrical, I'm, I'm sure mine are not gonna be perfectly symmetrical. That'll just speak to, you know, we're seeing them at different angles. One's holding a sparkler, one's holding a clock. <laughs> so we can certainly modify it if we need to, but I'm thinking if they're not perfectly symmetrical, then it's all right. And then I'm going to wash and dry my brush I'm gonna pick up my custom nose color, my custom skin color, and color in my nose. And again, I don't need anything perfect right now. And if it dries a color that you weren't expecting it to, it's okay because when we go to do the second coat on it, you can make it pinker or browner or lighter, or you can adjust the color on the second pass. So I'm just gonna get a coat on here and then I'm going to wash my brush and I'm gonna put the little gold pieces on as well. So again, washing and drying my brush. I'm gonna pick up that custom gold color that we created and I'm gonna color in my gold areas. So these are gonna be, again, just very representational of um, this holiday. And I think that's a, a great way to, if you're creating your own designs, to just depict um, certain certain aspects of holidays and things of that nature if, if by using the standard or typical color schemes. Like when you're doing Christmas, if you use a lot of red and green, you, your, your painting or your composition will automatically speak to that holiday. So if I want something to speak to New Year's, there's, you know, you go to New Year's Eve parties and the decorations are in gold and black and sparkles and stuff like that. So if I'm creating a painting that I want to feel to have that feel that those are the colors I'm gonna inject into that painting in order to get it to um, speak to that specific holiday or event. And then once you've got this done, we are going to be using our, we're gonna use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the clothing. So that's gonna include the hat, the sleeves, and the dress, <laughs> and the dress, I guess, pants, bottom, 
whatever my little gnome is wearing. We're finishing the clothes. <laughs> I'm going to be using my medium brush. I'm going to be using black, white, and gold. And what I'm going to, in essence, be doing is adding strategic highlights and shadows to these, uh, these elements and a little bit of detail work on the sleeves. I'll be adding my highlights and shadows in order to give these form, dimension, and some, some details. I'm gonna start with my black areas. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be using black and white on my brush at the same time to create highlights that are one gonna speak to where the light source is. So I'll have some bright areas maybe up on the top right hand side, which will make it in, uh, assume that the light is up above. And then I'll be doing some grayish type of areas in through um, areas that I want to bump out a little bit, like maybe in through here, in through here, where I want it to look like the hat is fuller and maybe up at the top. And I'll do the same thing for the bottom too. So I have black and white on my brush at the same time right now. I'm gonna uh, start adding my light areas. So I put my light color, which is my black and white, on my brush in the area that I want to be the, the lightest and then I rub it out into the, into the hat. So what I'm in essence doing is saying, wherever I want this hat to pop out and look fuller, I'm gonna add a little bit of this gray type of a tone. It doesn't have to be really bright, it just, you just want it to be lighter than black. So my, when I put black and white on my brush at the same time, I can create this on the fly grayish type of a tone. If it goes too light on you, just back off for a minute, let it dry, and then you can come back and make it a little bit darker by just adding a little bit of black into it. So this is just kind of giving me my light zone in through here. I want some over in through here. So I just keep adding my black and white to my brush and getting my light areas to be created. When I get them in and ha and I'm and I'm happy with where where they're going and that they're they're telling the viewer how much this hat is popping out and things of that nature then I'll start adding on some extra bright white um, to allow for that light to be illuminating parts of the hat again just black and white on my brush right now I want this part to look like it's kind of flopping over so I'm going to have this whole kind of top area right to this crease is going to have a little bit of lightness to it so something like this and this will also help it to stand out in front of that background as well and if you do it that was just a little bit too light so I just added a little bit more black to my equation I'm going to bring this right down in through here and just making sure I've got all of my my chalk mark uh, taken care of this is going to be lighter on this top right hand side as well so again, just black and white on my brush right now. You could certainly pre-mix yourself kind of a medium to dark gray in order to uh, accomplish a very similar process as I'm doing. I'm just mixing the paint on the fly or on the canvas as I go through the process. Right now I'm picking up black paint in order to just make sure I've got all this little area over here black on my on my dirty brush so that get those to blend in nice. That's looking pretty good. So I'm going to now, um, in a second here, <laughs> add a little bit more white paint to my equation so I can get a real bright highlight over here on this right hand side. So I put my white on there and then I just kind of blend it towards this left. So it blends in with my with my gray a little bit. And again, it doesn't have to be a, a perfect blend. It doesn't have to um, be anything other than something that tells the viewer that that light is more evident over on that right hand side, if you want that to happen. I'm putting a little bit more up in through here and then just getting it to blend out towards this left hand side. And you could use a different brush to accomplish the same thing. So what it, wherever your comfort zone is on um, blending, you can certainly use a different brush to accomplish it. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this, de on this area down below. So black and white on my brush. I want this right hand side to be the brightest. So this is where I'm putting more white over here on this right hand side. Maybe a little bit up and through here. I'm picking up more black right now to get this to blend in. And I just want this to 
kind of speak to his, the the gnome's hip and <laughs> just kind of popping out in through here maybe he's dancing a little bit and then as i come over towards this uh left hand side i'll put more black there but i've got a pretty good color on my brush right now so i'm going to just utilize that over here while it's on my brush and that's another thing you know as you're going through this process if you find that you've got a good color on your brush at any given time that you want to use somewhere else, then just go to that place. I just picked up more black right now on my dirty brush so I can get this to, to blend in a little bit. And then it's looking pretty good, making sure I've left a good amount of black right underneath that, that beard like this. I think I want to put a little bit more white over on that right hand side just to make sure we can really see his hip popping out with the, with the dance movement, whatever he's doing in through here. And then I'm gonna, uh, I gotta do my gold pieces. So once I've got my, my black uh, garment area, oh, I need to do the little arms. So I've got my, a little bit of lightness on my brush. Just gonna pull a little bit of lightness up towards the top of those arms in through here. Then what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna pick up white paint I wiped my brush off on my paper towel, picking up some white paint just to give a couple of stripes on these sleeves, popping it out a little bit further than the actual footprint of the sleeve. So this gives me a little bit of fun detail on them. I'm gonna do the same thing on this arm over here. You could certainly use your small brush if you wanted to. I'm doing it at a curve, so it's speaking to the form of that little arm. Now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna finish these two areas. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black first in order to give myself a little shadow underneath these. So just a little bit of black is on my brush right now. Give a little shadow there. I'm gonna put a little shadow underneath this guy in through here. We'll put more shadow in the um, beard and stuff as we go through that process, but right now I'm just kind of giving myself a little bit of shadow at the bottom of this um, hat. So black, you could even use a little bit of liquid medium or water on your brush in order to get this little bit of a shadow going underneath uh, or at the bottom side of it. So something like that. Now I'm gonna just pick, I wipe my brush off. I'm picking up some of my gold just to make sure I've got a good second coat on this uh, object like this. And then once I've got my second coat, I'm just gonna pop a little highlight on in the area that I feel is popping out the most to the viewer, which is gonna be that spot right above the nose and maybe this little spot over here. But I'm right now just kind of layering on another layer of the gold. Now without washing my brush, I'm just picking up white paint. I'm gonna do a nice bright highlight in through here and over here and I'm going to do the same exercise on that little ball part um, on his hat as well. Just get this on in through here. So as I pop that that highlight on and just kind of blending it into that wet gold color that was underneath it. You can also just kind of pull it over in through here. That's looking pretty good. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this little area up here so I just wipe my brush off I'm picking up more of my gold put a nice second layer on in through here and then I'll just pop a little bright highlight on it with some white and then we're going to be using the same brush for the next step so once you've got your clothing done <laughs> you can wash and dry this uh, medium brush and get ready for the next step all right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the beard and the nose. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are black, brown, white, probably my light tan or light gray, whatever you wanna call that, as well as my skin color. I'm gonna tackle my beard first. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be adding shadowy hair as it's coming out from underneath the hat as well as underneath the mustache and then we'll add some highlighted hair 
on top of that. We'll also be having a bow tie in this area later, but you don't have to worry about that now. Just know that if you do something you don't like, you get to cover it with a bow tie later. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up a little bit of black and brown. Oh, and we're gonna do highlights and shadows on the nose to finish it as well too. I have a little bit of black and brown on my brush at the same time. I'm putting in my real shadowy stuff first. You can have your um, color of your beard and mustache, whatever color you would like. It does not have to be the same as mine. It can be lighter, it can be darker, it can be curlier, it can be what, it could be a female, you could put braids coming down. Whatever is speaking to you is the way that you should do it. It does not have to be like mine, but what I'm gonna do right now is I'm pulling out these little shadowy pieces um, coming out from underneath the hat. I'm also gonna pick up a little bit more of the black and the brown to um, put a little area where the mustache kind of meets the beard in through here. So this is gonna help to um, delineate those two areas from one another. So I'm kind of just almost underlining where I want the mustache to go right now, something like this, and then I can pull down. I'm gonna t uh, wash my brush. I don't want so much black coming down into the beard, so I'm washing my brush. I'm picking up uh, just brown right now, and I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna bring this down into the uh, beard aspect of it. So again, this is just gonna help to show the difference between that beard versus the mustache, and it also helps to give you a little bit more movement within that hair. So I'm just kind of pulling some of this down in through here, maybe a little bit over this arm in through here, and then I'm gonna put a little bit, right now I'm just using brown. I'm gonna put some of this right underneath, oops, on top of the nose, <laughs> right underneath the nose as well as if the hair underneath the, the nose it might be a little shadowed by the nose. So you can certainly bring a little bit in through here. And again, it, it's, this is a, the mission here is to just get these pieces to kind of separate. I'm picking up a tiny bit more black just for this little area right in through here. So we make sure that we've got a good, maybe his mouth hides underneath here somewhere because I know the gnome has to eat somehow. So now that I've got that done, maybe a little bit more brown, coming between the uh, darker hairs uh, underneath the hat into the longer hairs. Once I've got that done, what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm gonna pick up some white and my tan or light gray, whatever you wanna call it. And I'm gonna start adding all of the little um, exterior type of texture to my beard and my mustache. So I'm just doing this in this really nice kind of fun generic type of um, curl coming out. You could certainly do yours in a different way. Again, you can make yours curlier or straighter, whatever works for you. But I'm starting with both the tan and the gray just to get the movement going. I will put just white on in a minute, but I wanted these two colors to just kind of start the the wavy kind of process. If you want it to look like it's kind of coming over the arm, you can accentuate the brightness as uh, these waves kind of make their way over the arm. And then in through here, make it go as wavy as you want. It can be, you know, straight, wavy, whatever works for you. I just want to give it a nice kind of transition into the um, clothing. You can make it longer if you wanted to. If you wanted some longer pieces, just pull some longer pieces down. You can make it confusing looking or like he really just, it's, you know, it's all nice and brushed and there's not gonna be any, any hair out of place. Whatever works for you is totally fine. And I'm just kind of making sure it blends up into the shadowy area. And once I've got kind of all the movement on there, this was again with my tan plus white. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some really bright white areas in so it just has a lot of volume and um, if I can ever stop this one step first, <laughs> it'll have a lot of volume and have great texture in that, um, in that hair. So now I'm just picking up white and I'm really just kind of amping up these tips of the 
of the hair, something like this, making sure I've got as much brightness as I want. And then once I've got this done, I'll, I'll tackle that cute little nose, gnome nose. <laughs> That's one of those tongue twisters that I'm sure I could not say three times fast. But anyways, so I'm just getting this nice white bits and then I'm gonna pull in some more white down uh, uh, down in through here. And again, this is just a final kind of, I want a lot of white in my beard. So it really speaks to the, the pristine nature of my, of my gnome that he's got some nice bright white hair and it, you know, he's just ready for his party and he's got volume to it. And then once I've got this, I'm gonna go ahead and do the, um, do his little nose. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush if I can ever stop making this cute beard. And again, make it as bright as you want or as soft as you want. I'm thinking that's pretty good. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna uh, tackle this with a little bit of a shadow first. So I'm gonna pick up a touch of brown and my skin color. So brown with a little bit of my skin color. I'm gonna put a shadow down at the bottom of my nose so it meets my beard as well as just a little bit up at the top as if that shadow from the hat is is happening i'm going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel if you have a lot of brown you can certainly wash your brush and then i'm just going to pick up a little bit more of my skin tone just to get that shadow to blend with the um with the middle part of the nose something like this and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna put a little highlight on the nose. So you don't have to do much to the nose, just giving it a little bit of volume is gonna make it, you know, again, have more substance to it, make it look more lifelike, even though, you know, we don't often see gnomes in real life, this will give it a lifelike feel. So I just added a little bit of white on my brush and even if your um, skin tone that you just put on there is a little wet, this is gonna, blend in with it. So just a little bit of white, wipe my brush off on my paper towel. It's not all the way to the top. It's a little bit away and you can even put it over to the right a little bit if you wanted to. And you don't just have to do the highlight with white. You can certainly progressively um, use your skin tone with it as well. I'm just kind of uh, maneuvering it out and getting it to blend into that skin tone. So that's going to give me, again, a believable highlight to that nose. And then once you've got this done, we're going to be using, I think I want to blend this a little bit further out. Once you've got this done, we're going to be using um, our small brush for the next step. So I'm just going to blend this out a little bit more. I'll probably let mine dry and I might add a little extra pop of a highlight on the tip of it, but it's looking pretty good for now. So I'm gonna wash and dry, or I'm gonna put this medium brush away, take out my small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the base coat for our bow tie, our wand, and our clock, which is gonna include outlining the thumbs too. <laughs> So we're starting all these cool little details. I'm using my small brush. You could probably get away with using your medium brush for it too, but I'm gonna just err on the side of caution and use my small brush. So I'm gonna do my bow tie first. You can really have a lot of fun with creating this shape. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come kind of directly below the nose. You could certainly go off center a little bit if you wanted it to look cuter. <laughs> I don't know how much cuter we could make this, but I'm gonna do kind of a oval type of a shape for the um, center part of my bow tie and then I'm just going to bring this out in these um, uh, kind of triangular, soft triangular type of shapes on the right and the left and just color it in with black. Uh, we'll be putting some fun detail on it in a little bit but this will just get you started. I suppose you could have, you know, like a different kind of tie if you wanted to. You could put a necklace and make it a girl. You could really, well, I guess girls can wear bow ties too. They, that looks kind of cool too. So you can make it into whatever you like. So that's gonna be my fun bow tie shape. Then I'm going to, um, I don't even know if I said what colors I was using, but I'm gonna use black 
um, and gold are going to be my colors right now. So I'm going to just use a little bit, uh, I just put a tiny bit of water on my brush to outline where I want my thumbs to go. So I'm just, I'm just doing a light or a faint outline on my thumbs so I can put, um, I know where I can put my objects around them. So that's my purpose of doing this right now. So there's going to be my little thumbs. Now I'm going to uh, put more black paint on my brush. I'm going to create my wand. I'm just doing a long diagonal type of a um, shape that's going to go through the thumb. So I'm going to start way up in through here and then just create my, my diagonal line. I'm going to skip my thumb in through there and I'm going to bring mine I would say maybe just a little bit further than this and then I'm going to widen it a little bit I called it a wand it's not a wand it's a sparkler <laughs> which I guess I guess it could be a wand um, with sparkles on the end <laughs> but I had in, in my head I was intending it to be like a uh, New Year's Eve one of those cute little sparklers that you just light the end and it's got sparkles on the end. <laughs> so that's looking good, but I guess it could be a magical little wand too. So we've got that and I'm just widening it a little bit. So it's got some good substance to it. That looks good. And then I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to be putting a um, the clock on. So I'm going to use my gold color as my base color for my clock. I'm going to have it uh, him holding on to it in through here. So I'm just going to put a, right above my thumb. I'm going to put a little line in through here, go right down, skip, you know, below your thumb, and then you're just going to bring it straight down. So maybe mine needs to go a little to the right. That's a good thing about wet paint. You can just wipe it right off. I think I need this a little bit, a little bit more to the right. Yeah, there we go. And then I'm going to bring this straight down until I'm probably maybe about an inch and a half to two inches past uh, his hand. So something in this uh, length. But again, you can make yours as wide or as thin or long as you want. Then I'm going to create a circular um, object. You might opt to draw this out or just kind of give yourself a circle, circular type of a shape. Mine's most likely not going to be super perfect, but once I put my numbers on it and I put all of the other details in it, I'm sure it'll be all right if it's a little bit wobbly. <laughs> but if you need yours to be perfect, you could certainly just kind of um, grab a small object like the butt end of a cup or something along that line and draw around it and that'll give you a nice perfect circle. And then once I've got this, I'm going to put just a couple of little decorative um, markings or um, mechanisms on the neck part of this of this clock or watch. I guess this could be more like a watch, kind of like a big pocket watch of sorts. So something like that looks pretty good. And I'm going to just put, I'm going to have kind of a little curved mechanism in through here like that. And then I'll put a little uh, kind of part up in through here. You, these are just fun decorations that you could really kind of use your own imagination and make them into whatever that you would like. And then once you've got this done, we're going to use our, we're going to use a combination of our large brush and our small brush for the next step. So you can wash this brush as well as getting your large brush out and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our sparkler. I'm gonna be using my large and my small brush. So I'm gonna use my large brush for the glow behind it and then I'll use my small brush for the sparks in the sparkler. I'm gonna be using just yellow and white. You could certainly have your sparkler any sparkling any color that you want. Again, you could have blue sparkles or purple sparkles, whatever you'd like. I want this to stand out and look like it's closer to the viewer than the, than the fireworks in the back. So I'm not going to be incorporating any red and I'm using my smaller brush so it has smaller marks than these ones and it'll look more um, in 
focus and in detail close to us. So I'm going to start with my large brush with just yellow paint and I'm going to put my glowy area at the tip of my um, of my sparkler wand thing <laughs> and then I can just kind of pull it out as far as I want. Again, you can make yours really big, you can make it really, you know, exciting and have lots of motion and stuff. What I'm doing is I'm just trying not to use too much paint. So I'm allowing um, myself to almost kind of thin out this paint and, and it's drying in essence kind of on the fly as I'm doing this. It takes literally seconds to kind of get uh, on the drier side so that way it allows me to just build these layers as I'm going. So this is kind of giving me my, my nice start to my sparkler. I'm going to just bring this up a little bit further in through here. So that's good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add um, a little bit of yellow and white on my large brush as well just to start um, some of the brighter marks to it, but I don't want to do too much with this brush. So I'm just kind of really tapping it off on my paper towel, making sure I've got um, a very little bit of paint on it so I can create. I'm starting it very similarly to how I did the big fireworks, but less, um, less pressure on my brush, smaller marks. So this way it's gonna make it look like it is closer to us. And in a second, I'll start adding my my real sparkle marks. But this this just starts the party for me. Gives me a little bit, you know, the essence of some more of some good volume in it. So that's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to take out my small brush, and this is where I'm going to be um, really making some fun marks. <laughs> I'm starting with some white paint. I'm going to do a lot of little tiny polka dots in the center so this is going to make it look like it's got tons of energy i'm really going to just go wild with the with the polka dots i'm also going to be making what i'll call like little electrical spark type of marks so i'm going to take this white and kind of wiggle it so to me that's going to give it more of a sparkler type of a look because they kind of come out in this little twisty kind of way so that's going to make it look different than the fireworks themselves I'll also give it a little bit more energy to it you can make them kind of coming out really far i'm going to have a couple just kind of maybe popping out even even farther they don't have to connect to the center this is what's going to make it look like they're just all these little um, sparkly type of marks just kind of coming out. You can, you know, dash them far away. You can make them, you know, you don't want them to injure your, your gnome, but <laughs> definitely having lots of energy inside that center is going to be really cool. I'm starting with the white first. So when I do add the yellow, which I'm going to in a minute, you'll be able to see the yellow really well because I'm going to put it right on top of some of these white marks. So the yellow is very transparent, but if I can provide a little bit in some areas of a lighter or whiter base, that's going to make that yellow look really true to its color. So that's um, where it's going to work out for me. I totally don't like that one in through there. So hold on. I'm going to wash and dry my brush. That one's too much for me. I just put a little bit of black paint on my brush. We're going to make this one look even smaller. I might have to wait for it to dry a little bit more. Actually, let's just go for some water on my brush. See if I can erase it. There we go. I can just erase it. And then I'm going to put a uh, wash and dry my brush because I don't want black on my brush right now. I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow now. So I'm going to use yellow as some fabulous polka dots inside of my firework or my, my sparkler. So that's going to really add that great energy to it. And again, make it as much as you want. And this is what I was talking about. If I take this, this yellow and put it on top of one of my white areas. Now this yellow is way brighter than the yellow that I was using in the background. So that white base is going to allow you to have these uh, brighter marks of the yellow. It's going to allow that yellow to pop out a lot. 
And then I just, now at this point, I'm going to keep alternating between my white and my uh, yellow to make this as sparkly as I want. And then I'm also going to have a couple of pieces um, kind of falling down because I know when sparklers, when I used to use sparklers <laughs> in the day, they always had these little spots that would just, again, fall to the ground. So I'm going to create some of those little marks just kind of falling, you know, just bring them down. I've got a little bit of white on my brush right now. Maybe we've got some coming down in through here. And again, this is just one of those little tiny details that is going to add to to the look of it is going to add to the vibrancy of it and then once you've got this done you make it as as energetic as you want we're going to use our the same brush for the next step so you can just wash and dry this little brush if you can ever stop making fun sparkle marks <laughs> and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the bow tie and the hands. I'm gonna use my small brush. The colors I'm using are black, white, and my grayish tan color that we created. How I'm gonna do this is I'm just gonna be doing some nice highlights on my bow tie so you can see the details of it. And then we'll be doing some highlights and shadows on our little hands so they have a little, a little bit of form to them. So I'm gonna start with my bow tie and I'm gonna put black and white on my brush at the same time to create my highlighted area. So I have black and white on my brush. I'm gonna create a little bit of a highlight on this front part in through here. Same color combination is going on my brush to create these little, um, we'll call them creases in the fabric. So something like that will create some nice creases in my fabric. You can even add a little extra on the edge like that gonna do the same thing over on the other side. So black and white on my brush at the same time. And again, I'm using it like I used it on the hat. So maybe one time it's a little bit lighter, maybe one time it's a little bit darker. It provides you with a little bit more of a natural type of um, gradient throughout those, those tones as you're working your way through the details. So it looks a little bit more um, kind of realistic. And then once I've got that on there, I'm gonna put a touch of white on my brush and give myself a little bit of an extra pop of a highlight just on the little tips where I feel that it might catch it the most, maybe a little bit on this upper right on this side and then maybe this little edge, top edge of um, that center piece. And then once I've got that, I'm gonna start working on my hands. So I washed and dried my brush. I've already got a little bit of a shadow underneath these um, these thumbs, but I wanna amp it up just a little bit. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of my black just to make sure that I've got as much of a, of a shadow as I want and make sure that this little um, stick goes as far as I want in through there. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So I just have a little bit of the black on my brush. So the shadow would end, end up to putting a little shadow on that clock part in through there. I don't really need much on this top side. That looks pretty good to me. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, wash and dry my brush. And I'm, I don't think I said I was gonna pick up brown, but I am. I'm picking up brown plus my gray color, my tan, my custom color that I created. I'm gonna put just a little bit of a shadowy area towards the bottom of the hand in through here. And if you bump into your um, sparkler, it's okay. You can, you can uh, paint that back over. I'm gonna do the same thing over here, maybe a little bit underneath here where that hand kind of meets the sleeve. Now I'm picking up just my tan to get this all to, to blend in. Again, I just want it a little bit darker where it was kind of going underneath that sleeve maybe or the bottom side of these hands just so Again, it gives it a little bit more um, dimension, picking up just that grayish color that we created to make sure this side blends in pretty well. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of a highlight. And also I'm doing a second coat to make sure that I have full coverage. Again, sometimes when we're, when we're doing these, these processes, that one coat doesn't give you a nice, soft, smooth coverage. So just pop in a second coat on these areas, we'll make sure that it's fully covered and then you've got 
all those transitions the way that you want to. Now I'm going to pick up my uh, tan plus white on my brush at the same time. I want a little bit of extra highlight on the tops of my hands and my thumbs. So uh, this is just a little bit of my tan plus white to give me a little extra highlight or a little extra um, form at the top of those those pieces that works out well so tan plus white over on this side as well hitting this thumb in through here and then the top side of this hand I'll probably have to touch up that little sparkler because we're working around it working around objects is not the easiest thing to do so that's again what I was speaking to before about working from the back forward it's usually the the easiest route for me to take but when I'm doing these smaller objects like this I may end up having to work around other stuff which is fine you just kind of work it the way that you can I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black on my brush right now just to fix my my little sparkler in through here and then I'm gonna pick up just white I'm washing and drying my brush I'm picking up just white paint to give myself one final pop of a highlight on these um, hands so just white is going to give me a little extra pop in through there make sure that they are as bright as I want them to be rubbing it in so I can get it to again make sure that it's blended and doing the same thing on the other side and then once you've got this done we are going to be using this same brush for the next step so you can just wash it, just blend this in a little bit, wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our clock. I'm gonna use my small brush. The colors I'm using are gold, black, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be uh, putting a second coat on the main face of the clock. Then I'm gonna be putting a highlight on it at the top I'm going to put some details on these little guys up and through here, and then we'll come back and put our numbers on the clock. So what I'm going to do is I'm just putting gold paint on my brush to give myself another coat of paint on the clock face. You might find that you have great coverage at this point and you don't need to add a, another coat, but I really kind of wanted it to look a little bit smoother so I'm opting to do another coat of paint on it plus this is going to help me to give the top um, a nice highlight with the paint being um, kind of fluid or still wet um, when I do that highlight on the top so I'm just putting another layer in like this and I'm, I'm doing a thin layer so it doesn't take too long to dry so you'll see I'm kind of working it right now to in order to um, clean up any or thin out any really thick spots and later after yours is all done you can certainly do I'm not going to do it now and I might not do it at all but you if you needed to clean up those edges around just let it dry and do a nice clean like black line around it and that'll make it pop so now that I've got my second coat on there I'm going to pick up white with my dirty brush and I'm going to put a highlight at the top part of the the clock face so I'm slowing down a little bit and just bringing this down towards this left hand side and then I'm going to do the same thing over on the right hand side maybe the right gets a little bit more or less whatever you want to do is up to you I'm running out of paint so I'm going to reload and I'm going to re um, start at the top so I can have a nice fluid brush stroke You'll notice sometimes I can't talk while I'm painting. <laughs> this is one of those moments where I'm concentrating on where I want to put my line. There we go. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to get it to blend in a little bit with that gold. There we go. Um, but sometimes I have difficulty talking <laughs> and painting at the same time. <laughs> I just put a little bit more on my brush, a little bit more uh, white. I put a touch of water on my brush too, just so I can kind of clean up this edge that fluidity on my brush helps to get smoother smoother lines so that's what I just did in through there now I'm going to do some details up top before I come back and make my my numbers on my clock so I am going to wash and dry my brush and I'm putting a touch of black paint on my brush I'm going to do a little shadow at the bottom 
of this piece onto that, um, the center stem area, so something like that. I'm going to do a little shadow underneath this guy in through here. I don't really need a shadow on the top part, so now I'm just going to wash and dry my brush. And I'm going to pick up my gold, and I'm going to do a second layer on these pieces. So just a second layer, again, is helping me to, um, me, you know, maybe clean up some edges. This is n totally not symmetrical, but I'm all right with that. I'm going to blame it on my gnome. Maybe he's holding it weird. <laughs> but if you need yours to be symmetrical, you can certainly just keep tweaking it until it's as straight as you need it to be, or is same from one side to the other. I'm going to just hit in here with another coat, in here, this top part right here with another coat, and you could, um, you know, do more than two coats if you wanted to, but I'm going to hit it with a little highlight in a minute too, so that'll help. Oh, I like that little bump I just made by accident. Um, the highlight I'm going to do in a minute will help to uh, make this even brighter. So right now just putting a second coat coming down here, pushing my brush in a, a seemingly kind of um, same firmness as I come down here. So my line width is uh, pretty similar from one side to the other, bringing this right down to that thumb in through there. And now, without washing my brush, I'm going to pick up a little bit of white, similarly to how I did on the face of it. And then I'm, I'm just going to add a little highlight on the top of here, a little highlight on the top of here. And again, you can make it as, as light or as dark as you want. I'm going to put a touch of a highlight coming down the edge of it in through here so it looks a little shiny. Gives me a little, a little extra bit of pizzazz. You could even, if you could get away with it in these little parts, go for it. Definitely on this little top part, put a little, little high, maybe a little bit more white than that. Be a little more bold. There we go. That'll make it pop. And now I'm going to go in for my numbers. So my numbers, you could certainly draw them out. I'm looking like I'm dry enough. I'm going to be doing them with black paint. So I washed and dried my brush, but my process is I'm not going to draw them out. I'm just going to kind of do them in a systematic way and you'll see how I do it. My whole goal is to just try and get them to be similar in height. I like to use my um, own penmanship which tends to be kind of just like on the, on the block, blocky side of um, way of making letters and stuff. So I always recommend kind of going with what you do naturally and that's where you're going to find the most success in something that should be or you would want to be kind of symmetrical. So I'm going to start with my 12 o'clock first. I have thinned out black paint on my brush and I'm going to just start up in through here and it's going to, I go a little slow so that way I can kind of get my letters to be the, or my numbers to be the way that I want. Then I got to do my number six, which is just going to be directly below here. So that's how I'm going to keep them pretty symmetrical is I'm going to go for the ones that are um, in a very standard position that I can find easily. So that's my number six. And again, I'm just trying to keep them of equal height. I'm going to go for my number three. So I find myself the center and then just go over to the right and try and make it in a similar height to what I did for the six and the 12. So something like that. Now I'm going to go for my number nine. So over here, I'm going to start. Mm, don't screw up your nine. <laughs> I almost was like, which way am I going to do my nine? But I'm going to do it similar to how I did my six. Something like that. I don't know about you, but I'm holding my breath a little bit here <laughs> to make sure I don't screw this up too bad because it's not drawn out. So now I just need to do the opposing numbers. So we're going to do a one somewhere in through here, a two somewhere in through here. Okay, that wasn't very well equally spaced, but that's okay. Three, four, we're gonna do a four right in through here. And then we're gonna do our five. See, we get to count too. I probably made these a little bit too big, but that's all right. That's all right. I'm just gonna 
make sure everybody can see these numbers. There we go, <laughs> five. And you could just do 12, six, and nine, or 12, three, six, and nine too, if you wanted to. So we've got a seven, I'm gonna try not to run out of room here. We've got an eight, like that. Oh, we're, we're getting this, we're getting this. I got a 10, as I'm not speaking, <laughs> a 10, and then we've got our 11. And then what I'm gonna do, I've gotta do my, um, the hands of the clock. So of course you wanna start in the center, so I'm just gonna kinda give myself a little center circle like this. And then I want it to be just before midnight. So I'm gonna put the short hand is gonna be right kind of um, at 12 o'clock. And then the, the long hand is gonna be right before 12 o'clock. And I'm just gonna do, oops, I don't want that long. I'm gonna do um, just a very slender line. I'm gonna do it crossing over the back in like that. And then I'm gonna do it just a couple minutes before. So we make this one a little bit longer and just bring it right in <laughs> my hands shaking. <laughs> Hold on, let me change my angle here. Uh, I don't know if that was a good decision, but we're gonna try it. I'm just gonna bring it right in through here, bring it back like that. Whoa, that, that worked. And then I'm just gonna uh, make little adjustments. You can certainly make little adjustments to yours as well. And then once you've got it done, we're gonna use this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so we are onto the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I think I'm going bottom right on this one with my gold color. I like to, and I'm using my small brush. I like to sign mine with my initials but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you want for your identifying mark to be. It's totally up to you because it's your painting and you get to sign it however you would like. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a really cute celebratory gnome and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.